What's up, everybody? Jeremy from Whistle Kick Back. This is part three, I guess, of our The Mind set of the martial artist series. In part one, we talked about the mindset of the beginner martial artist. In part two, the mindset of the intermediate martial artist. And today, now, we're, excuse me, we're going to talk about the mindset of the advanced martial artist. And for these purposes, we're going to define advanced as, could be a black belt or equivalent might also be like a red or a brown belt. We're probably talking about people who've been training for, I'm going to say four or five years or more. Obviously, the mindset of someone who's been training for five years is dramatically different from someone who's been training for, say, 20 years. But it's not necessarily as different as the difference between someone who's been training for three weeks and someone who's been training for five years. What do we know about the person who's been training for this long? And clearly, martial arts is something significant to them. It means something to them. They've made sacrifices for their training, for their education. They've achieved some rank, some standing within their school. They have some competency, some skill. They're probably doing some instruction to others. Maybe they teach classes by themselves. Maybe they're an assistant instructor. But if nothing else, they're probably expected to help out a little bit or Please set an example. As you can see, I'm driving and uh, using ways because it tells me things like this. And why do we care? In part one, the reason we cared was we want to make sure that these people, these beginner martial artists, come in and have a good experience so they'll stick around. In part two, we talked about understanding them because it can be a really challenging time in between the beginner and the advanced stages. The advanced stages are similar to the intermediate stages in that the challenge is that the novelty isn't there. We're not learning different new things all the time. That's not what's keeping an advanced martial artist motivated and attentive. And in fact, the advanced martial artist can have the frustration of the intermediate martial artist by not learning new things rapidly or, or frequently. But the overwhelming feeling of the beginner martial artist, because what they're expected to know already is pretty dramatic. There's a significant amount of material that most advanced martial artists have been exposed to and are expected to retain some competency of. A significant number of forms and techniques, it's expected that when they're sparring and doing self-defense or any, anything like that, that they know a lot of different moves. They have a lot of different options for what they're doing in any kind of freeform stuff. And it's expected that they set a good example. The expectations are usually pretty substantial. There's a lot that they have to do and know and be. And that can be overwhelming. More so, the smaller the school, the more that is usually asked of them. The blurrier the lines. I've seen some small schools where this sort of advanced definition starts to slide lower and lower. People who would fit our definition of the intermediate martial artist considered advanced because the bodies are needed. I'm not saying that they're promoted excessively, but that they are asked to teach right off the bat, not because that's the culture of the school, but because there are other options. So when you think of that overwhelming feeling, there are a lot of martial artists who will push through. And quite often they push through because they're looking for a single goal. And that goal, as we've talked about on Martial Arts Radio quite a few times, is frequently earning their black belt. If you talk to anyone who's owned a martial arts school for a long time, they will tell you that one of the most frequent points in training that people will drop out is when someone has earned a black belt. 
because that's the goal that we generally put forward in the martial arts. The black belt is the standard. It's the, it's what we achieve. It's the more or less end of the road. Now, of course, we know that that's not true. Anyone who's been training a really long time, you know, 10 years or more, knows that there's so much more to learn, but that's how a lot of people see it. And honestly, it's our fault because that's what we put forward quite often. It's what we've given the media and popular culture. So what do we need to do to help support the advanced martial artist? Well, first off, we need to remember that they are still students. We're all students. So if you're an instructor and you have advanced martial artists in your school, you have to make sure you're doing more than just asking them to teach. Their time training cannot be only teaching. Yes, teaching is important. Teaching others helps us understand content. It helps us understand what we're teaching and, and our relationship to our material. There are substantial benefits to teaching the material to others. I'm not arguing that. But it's something that takes of you. If you teach, you know that it can be draining. Now, if the people coming to train are only teaching, they are going to start to associate some negative feelings with their training. They might not even be conscious of it. I know people who love teaching, who are asked to teach all the time, and they still feel tired. They're still exhausted from it. Maybe not all the time, but like everything else, we need some balance. So what else, what are we balancing that with? There's nothing wrong with you throwing your advanced students a private lesson once in a while, or making sure that you get some one-on-one -on -one time with them, even if it's just a couple minutes. Having them stay a few minutes late, taking them to dinner. In short, making sure that you know you value them, or they know you value them. Making sure that they understand they are an important part of the community. This is whether or not they're teaching. Because even if that advanced martial artist isn't teaching, they are an example. They're someone others are looking to. Is that person happy? Do they appear to be progressing? If not, other people are less likely to stick around. I've seen martial arts schools where an advanced student, especially someone who's been there a while, quite often the senior student, the person who is, let's say the most senior rank that is paying to be there, when they leave, Others take it as a sign that, hey, the ship's going down, I should get out of here. Because people don't want to make the wrong decision. They don't want to be part of a school that, you know, for whatever reason, isn't going right. They might not even know why they're doing it. It could just be the last straw. So we have to make sure we're treating these advanced martial artists with some care and some compassion. Now what's going on in their head? Even if they're not teaching, let's take the teaching component out. What's going on in their head? Besides the overwhelming feeling, they may love what they do, but they want to learn more stuff. They want to learn new stuff. Maybe there isn't new stuff. Maybe there isn't stuff that is appropriate for them to learn yet. How do you help them find, just like with the intermediate martial arts, how do you help them find the novelty within the things that they already know? There's some stuff there. How do you help them develop their own personality within the martial arts. That's something that happens usually in later beginner stages, maybe even intermediate stages, but starting to develop their own identity and making sure that you're fostering their identity, that other people in the dojo or the gym, the school, are fostering that identity, treating those people with respect and valuing the individuality there. Even with schools where you're staying rigid, where there is a right and a wrong way to do things, within freeform material, there is still opportunity for individualization. Now, the mindset of the advanced martial artist is probably the one that's going to vary the most. 
because you do have people that really, really enjoy quote unquote mastering the material. They enjoy knowing exactly what's there and having most of it behind them. But that's not all of them. And even the ones who enjoy having this stuff behind them are going to go through points in time where they are bored. This is where I start to talk about things like taking breaks and stuff like that. It's okay to take a break. Did a whole episode on that probably a couple years ago at this point. But the advanced martial artist is someone special. It's uncommon to reach these ranks. It's uncommon to dedicate yourself to something like this for this long and to have these sacrifices. And because it's uncommon, we can say something about them. And in short, the major thing we can say, based on the hundreds of people that I've talked to on Martial Arts Radio, there was something lacking from their lives, something that they found within their martial arts, within their training, it filled a gap, it plugged a hole. And so knowing that there's that hole, that gap, gives them the opportunity to address it. But they may not know or have the courage to do so. If you're in a position to know what that is, you have the opportunity to help them. Maybe what they need is, let's say it's a family thing. Let's say there's an issue going on at home. Understanding and treating them compassionately within the, the opportunity that you have to make sure that they're, they feel okay. That's good. That's important. It's something that you should do. It's something that you can do. It's something you can do regardless of your standing in the school. You can be a brand new white belt and say, hey, that person's been here for seven years. There's something about martial arts that is really important to them. And the more you get to know them, the more likely you'll be able to pick up on this. What is it that's missing that martial arts contributes? Now, this is not to say that martial arts is only for incomplete people. all have struggles, we all have challenges, and martial arts can be appropriate for a wide variety of those, and to understand and help people grow is important, and it's something that we should all strive to do, not just as martial artists or friends of other martial artists, but as human beings, part of the world. Part of the reason this episode, this part three, came out after the first two is I needed some time to think about it. If you've watched them on YouTube, you know I'm wearing a different shirt. It's been a couple days. It's been over 48 hours since I recorded those first two episodes because I needed to roll this around in my head a little bit. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I nailed it. Why? Because this is the phase that I'm in. I'm an advanced martial artist. I've been training a long time. And sometimes I can't see the forest for the trees. There's some trees. You can probably see them if you're watching. But I know that I love martial arts. And I know other people who've been training 5, 10, however many years love martial arts. And I just want them to continue to love martial arts. So your challenge, and this applies for everyone, regardless of your rank, regardless of the rank or the experience of the people that you're working with and talking to, one of your responsibilities as a fellow martial artist is to support other martial arts and other martial artists, to be kind, to be compassionate, to have empathy for what they're facing, to recognize that your experience is both unique to you, but also similar to others. And to recognize that the only way any of us get better at martial arts is with the support and help of others. Nobody learns martial arts in a vacuum. 
and martial arts are not passed on to others in a vacuum. It requires interaction, it requires humanity. And I hope that I hope you'll take that opportunity. If you head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you can see all the episodes that we've got. Most of them are available on YouTube, but of course you're only going to get the audio except for the occasional video episodes that we do. At whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, you're going to get transcripts, you're going to get photos, and videos, and links for the episodes, guest episodes. If you go to whistlekick.com and you use the code PODCAST15, that'll get you 15% off everything we make from our uniforms or our training equipment to apparel, sweatshirts, hats, tees, lots of stuff. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on YouTube, but we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with the username at whistlekick. And my personal email address is jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.